something that I come across quite a bit is uh, on these petrol vehicles when we're tuning them, we need to take a lambda reading and these vehicles are often built with a really silly exhaust when it comes with regards to trying to get a lambda probe in there. I'm not happy with the depth of how far I've got this probe in. What I might actually do is just ring the customer and just ask if I can fit a lambda boss. Otherwise, I think if I'm mapping and trying to dial in cruise and low speed RPM, I think there's not going to be enough exhaust gas speed to get an accurate lambda reading. Whereas if they uh, if get this lambda probe, I don't know, a foot or further into the exhaust system, we could potentially uh, get some more accurate readings. I've got uh, something else that I use usually, uh, which is like a clamp on. Uh, I might try that actually. I might try that. That might work. But yeah, think of your tuner. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just one of the things when it comes to preparing one of these vehicles on the dyno. Uh, I'm just not happy with that. It just yeah, it probably is safe, but I don't want to. Um, I don't want to run the car with that kind of setup. So yeah, thought that'd be worth showing. Let's see if I can get this clamp on. Okay, we'll try that. Some of you might be thinking, well, it doesn't go in the tailpipe very far, but this design is actually it's an innovate product. It's actually designed for going in the tailpipe and uh, it's not this is something I've made and it does work very well we do need to get this quite far into the exhaust but this is just designed it works better for some reason it's got like a a thing inside it <laughs> right let's see if it works Right, hello and welcome back to the channel again. Uh, today we've got a, a 4.6 litre V8 in for mapping and it's on Omex. So let's take a look. So this is an engine that's actually just been rebuilt uh, with some headwork and some cams. So first job really for this one is to run the engine in. Uh, whilst I'm running the engine in, I will be uh, mapping things like cruise and uh and and low sort of the, the the bottom half the bottom half of the uh shall we say the uh the fuel table there um i've already gone through the ignition tables made sure everything's super safe um for that process before we do start power tuning um but essentially yeah omex 710 and 4.6 liter v8 so just had a i don't know if i showed it or not a little bit of a look at uh how we're going to be monitoring lambda so we actually, I normally would use this setup, but it's the vehicle's too tall for it. Um, but what we do is we're actually going to use an Innovate clamp. Um, and as always, we use our MoTeC uh, PLM, Professional Lambda Meter. Uh, and that is how we monitor air fuel ratio or Lambda uh, doing this whilst we're doing the tuning on the petrol vehicle. So just continue to make some preparation in the cell and uh, yeah, we'll have a go. A little dubious of these tyres, we'll see what they're like if they're not, uh, if I'm not happy with uh, how sort of off-road they are. Um, we've got some another set of steels that we'll put on it, but um, customer put these on as a dyno set of tyres, so we'll see. Well, we'll give it a go. I think I've had a car on the dyno with these tyres before and it's about okay, just about okay, so yeah. She did have a little bit of a confusion with the uh, identifying the ECU. Customer says it's a uh, an Omega 710. Now the case looks like a 710, but I was like, well, is it? Is it? Is it an Omega Squirt? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> it's not. It's an Omega 710. So yeah. Right. So yeah, it's all obviously strapped up and ready. Um, I just need to uh, get on my ear defence. 
and uh, just start getting a bit of temperature into this, making sure there's no coolant leaks. It's a, like I say, it is a fresh build, and um, the customer has run the vehicle up enough to make sure there's no coolant leaks, etc. But I want to break the engine in, and I'm sure that a few of you have some questions. How do you break the engine in? Well. Let's use quite a bit of load and make the vehicle work quite hard. Not, I'm not beating on the car, but you, you, you need to be running the car at a decent amount of pressure. So I generally put sort of three, 400 newtons of load on the dyno. So I would use um, constant traction and put say 300 newtons on the dyno. Um, and then on this screen, I can obviously, when the engine's running, I can monitor lambda whilst I'm doing the cruise. Um, and like I say, 300 newton meters of load will be applied to the dyno. It's actually turned off at the moment, hence why um, there's no noises or anything like that from the dyno. But main screen that you might see today, or at least the screen I'll be looking at for probably more, not more, but for a good amount of time anyway. So, right, let's... Uh, Let's do some tuning. Also, another thing, people, I think people are enjoying this. Uh, what have you got in the shop today? Let's have a look. So one for diagnostics over there uh, and mapping. This one, the list for modifications and uh, work that's going on with this is ridiculous. Um, think. It would be rude not to feature this one at some point. We'll stay a little uh, tight-lipped on this one at some point. This as well, um, TGV, will be featured on the channel at some point. I think it's actually going home today. Um, we've done uh, a clutch and a red booster in this one. But yeah, it is um, perhaps, it's on air ride as well, perhaps one of the most modified fenders I've ever seen. I mean, I have never seen one with so many gadgets. That's a whole lot of buttons, radios, and it's one of those at a glance you think, mm, yes, yeah, modified truck, but the more you look at it, the more, like obviously more I've worked on it, so between myself and Will, the more tricks and gadgets and things that you find on it. So, yeah, that is a 300 TDI TGV registered on an 09. Yeah. So it was built and registered in 2009. This one, I think you may have seen this a couple of times on the channel. We own it, we're building it. Um, we'll feature this one at some point and in the naughty corner. Yeah, my car. So, for those that have not seen it, that is a 300 horsepower Citroen Saxo. <laughs> right, let's get on with the job. <laughs> So I've actually done a little bit of work um, on the map already and the work that I've done is um, it's just allowed the vehicle to start and idle nicely. It would start and sputter and be weak and maybe die and it wouldn't even really allow you to nurse the uh, nurse things with a throttle but um, without touching the throttle, where's the throttle input? You can obviously see throttle input just here. Um, Not too bad.
So that is the, uh, the running process done now. I uh, managed to do the bottom half of the fuel table. Um, I've just just preparing for um, essentially doing some full, uh, well not full throttle power testing, but I normally start power testing it around, just look at the ignition map, uh, 2D, 3D. I normally start uh, power testing at around 50% throttle. What I've done is I've just knocked back the timing a, a good bit more, just to make sure we are safe when we do start that process. So, yeah, um, so it's around sort of just, just about lunch time now. So I'm gonna break for lunch um, and uh, change the battery in a GoPro. And uh, yeah, and then we'll be back on with some 50% um, TP power testing. So, and then what we'll do is it, doing that allows me to just get every single cell mapped then um i'll just sort of i'll start off at 50 percent throttle and it, the, the map will trace all the way across here till the limiter um i'll then look at the dyno on the power graph um i'll have some data for lambda as well i'll use that lambda data to make alterations on that's the ignition table but on the fuel table um and that is how we adjust our um cells and then when i'm happy with 50 percent, i will move to around sort of 60 percent. yeah 59.8 is the next break point so around 60 percent and I'll rinse and repeat until we're at full throttle, to 100% throttle power testing. And then when I'm happy with all of that, that the fuel is all safe, then I'll start adding some timing as well. Okay, so first pull, 50% throttle. we stopped well I don't know what something gone wrong with the dyno I've got no load on the dyno at, at all I started a pull and uh, I didn't think it was wheel spin only that sort of power but yeah something's not happy go with a good old turn it off and then back on again and <laughs> we'll see if that sorts it so right weird Real weird that. Well, I'm starting to have some fun then. Um, lots of power at that point. So, reboot. Turn. Go. And then back on again. 
see if we've got any faults on the dyno. Diagnosing a dyno. Let's go through the usual checks. I'm expecting a fault on one of these. No? No? Okay. Well, we'll go back in. Well, uh, yeah, I can hear the dyno start, so we'll bring up the last run. And uh, yeah, I'll bring up the last run and uh, go again. We're at 60% throttle at the moment, we're over 200 horsepower. Pleasantly surprised by that, but yeah. The, uh, the power testing and the mapping done. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised with the results there. I actually asked the customer, uh, what should this make? And I'm, I was, I don't know, it's just nice to not know what the uh, what he would estimate, um, but his, where we've ended up, 256 horsepower and 378 newton meters as well. So not revving the thing out too hard. Uh, just put that into a different scale. So it's uh, just a bit nicer to look at. So yeah. Um, not revving it too hard, and uh, again, that's going to be quite rewarding to drive. So there's a good amount of torque. There's uh, 300 newton meters at least from sort of 2,200 rpm just beyond beyond that. The more you rev it out, the more this one's going to reward the driver. So uh, manual manual car as well. This one so much nicer to do than the last one, which was an auto. Um, so mapping on the Omex as well. Um, I'm a big fan of the Omex stuff, so if you do have an Omex car and you want it tuning, whether it's naturally aspirated or boosted, give us a shout. Um, hopefully we can uh, do some tuning for you, get the results that you, you're looking for. Uh, but all in all, yeah, that's not too bad. Um, just now to have a catch up with the customer, and um, I think he's using it not this weekend. Yes, he is, he's using it this weekend. <laughs> 
So yeah, hopefully we can have a bit of a follow-up and get a bit of feedback from them as well. So yeah, this one's been fun. Um, I think I've annoyed just about everybody in the workshop and the office today with the noise from this one. Um, what with the cams and the um, the headwork, the induction noise and the, well, sound from V8 anyway is pretty good. Um, but yeah, just it's just that bit more spicy. Right then, so we've. Uh, with this job complete, something I'm going to start featuring on the channel, um, being a Land Rover, um, how much oil did it leave on the dyno? <laughs> how much oil did this one leave? Okay, not bad. A little bit here, I need to power steering fluid if I'm honest, and then some here, clipping of a cable tie. <laughs> so yeah, not bad at all really. Um, oils prepare the uh, the dyno, clean it down before. Uh, the next vehicles run for that purpose you can tell who dropped what um, but yeah just a, a little bit of fun there for you that we will start adding in uh, what did it leave on the dyno <laughs> um, part of the way through tuning the vehicle we got to a point where we was mapping about 70% throttle and um, as soon as we got near peak torque we was the dyno was just letting go the um, what it was was wheel slip now since we've had this dyno, I have not had one vehicle that slipped a wheel. Um, wheel spin, essentially. Um, but with these tyres on the dyno, whilst they actually run quite smooth, the contact patch is so small. I think the contact patch was essentially these bits here. It was that small that, uh, yeah, slip happened. So what did we make? So yeah, 378, it's the Newton, it was the Newtons all along. So yeah, the Newton meters, so. Right, okay, um, see you next time. Right, so just to follow up at the end of the video, um, it's actually been about a week and a half since we mapped this and uh, just had a word with, uh, with the owner of the vehicle. Um, I really like to give the owner's name, but I just, I don't know whether I should. Um, but yeah, uh, what's happened is um, gone home, prepared the vehicle for the weekend for the racing and won, so well done on that one. Um, so yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, I know the owner of this one was, uh, was wanting to beat someone specifically and uh, Spot on, good job. Right, so I uh, might actually uh, pop in, uh, and watch this gentleman race and uh, we, may, we may feature this one on the channel a little bit more. I'm not sure at the moment, but we, uh, we might follow this one a little bit more closely. Um, he races alongside quite a few people that we know, we support, and uh, yeah, so uh, watch this space. Thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next one.